Rad Power Bikes 2018 Rad Rover. I've had the bike about six weeks now and put about 300 miles on it. Rad Rover 2018 Review. The 2018 Rad Rover has brought a new dimension to my cycling. It's my first e-bike and a fat tire nonetheless. I wanted an e-bike to extend my range and give me more opportunities to ride in more conditions. As I started to explore this space, I found that the fat tire was the way to go. It didn't take me long to find the Rad Rover as one of the top choices and ultimately my final one. The bike shipped quickly and within a few days I was assembling the Rover. All the tools necessary were in the box, a nice touch. I contacted a local bike shop and ensured that they were comfortable working on the bike should I need help. Any bike will need maintenance, especially an e-bike. Bigger than I thought, with the rack on the back, even having the dip in the frame, the big tires and weight make turns wide and maneuvering at low speeds difficult. I ride the bike like a motorcycle. I find myself following traffic more and not venturing onto sidewalks or any tight spaces. It's all okay, but don't think you're going to take this bike on an agile mountain biking course. Once I'm going, I'm cruising and little stops me. The fat tires assure me that anything I come across will be traversed. I'm not concerned of big storm grates or potholes that will trap my tires. They do bounce. If you haven't rode an e-bike, there are some riding differences, specifically when hitting bumps and going through turns. E-bike expect to be propelled. Bumps don't slow you down, especially on the rover, and everything's gonna come at you faster, so ride cautiously and be alert. Discussing more about the tires, they grab the road, everything on it, and throw it up at your face without fenders. Riding on hard pavement was generally okay. Wet roads, sand, loose dirt, and perhaps the worst, poop, all get thrown your way if you don't have fenders. The fenders by Rad Power Bikes were sold out and I heard mixed reviews regarding the clearance. I also have an issue where to transport this bike, the fenders limit a lot of rack options. My solution was to find a simple fender for the front and use the rack as my rear. I'm using the Topeak Fat Tire Rack and I love it. And I happen to already have the bag. I have Topeak racks on my other bike, so this is a more flexible option. Plus, Rad lost the opportunity again with no stock. The rack does a great job at acting as a rear fender. So far, no issues. For the front, I'm using a cheap plastic general fender that I had to cut so it didn't rub the on the tire. I'm still fooling around with it and it's fine for now. I'm sure I'll be testing more solutions, especially once the car rack arrives. So how does it do in the sand? First, I haven't aired down yet. I drive a Jeep on soft sand all the time and understand how critical it is to air down. If you are out for a ride and encounter a beach, you're not going to make it across soft, fluffy sand. If the sand has any structure to it, the fat tires will quickly grab hold and you will cruise along as if you were on hard pavement. But if the sand is soft and fluffy, you will have to air down. I'm yet to air down because this is inconvenient during a bike ride. The tires held up well against road hazards and I have not had any flats. One of the most common mistakes is not keeping your tires at proper inflation. I had the bike about two weeks when all of a sudden my appendix decided it wanted out. After being in the hospital a few days, I returned home and was missing the rover. But after a day or so, I got on the bike, went up and down the block, using a high level of assistance, low gears, and found the stretching motion with no resistance, a welcome activity to my recovery. Each day I got on the bike longer and added more resistance, which led to a very quick recovery. This unexpected tangent gave me a new appreciation for the Rover and has further inspired me to recommend e-bikes to those who are rehabilitating. When I know me ride, I go for about 90 minutes, traverse about 25 miles. I don't like too loose of a cadence, 
so I ride with more resistance using a PAS level of 2 or 3. The last 5 to 7 miles I would generally kick it in a higher level of assistance and use throttle more depending on what I'm doing. The end result is about 50% power remaining. Now this is for an average male on relatively flat ground, high wind resistance at times, traversing various terrain. Easily expect 15 to 20 miles from the battery. My conditions and ride style have let me easily go 35 miles with one bar to spare. I do get exercise. And I don't fear that if I decide to go too far and really burn myself out, I won't be able to make it back. The road will get you home and it will give you time to recover when needed. This has given me more consistent aerobic sessions and more importantly, more motivated to do more sessions. All in all, I'm very happy about my investment with the Rover. I do enjoy riding bikes, but given the rehabilitation options an e-bike offers, I recommend them for everyone. It's big, you will need space for it, and carrying it up a set of stairs is not an option. Make sure you maintain it. Have a plan of who could help. Ride bikes can offer help as well. Once you are on it, expect a big smile on your face. You're gonna get a lot of attention. People are not quite sure what they're looking at, but the overall response I get is a head nod and a smile. It just makes everyone happy. Please feel free to leave some comments, like this video, and subscribe to keep the channel going. Thank you.